Okay, so in uh, this session, we look again at linear approximation. And um, let me review the formula for you. The closest linear approximation is given this way. If we have a function f, which is defined and differentiable at x naught, I'll say that its linearization is defined by L of x equals f of x naught plus the derivative of f at x naught times x minus x naught. That's the linearization of f at x naught. And typically what happens is x naught is an, a point at which the calculation of f and its derivative are simple. And then if the calculation of the values of f is more difficult at some point x close to x naught, then we can approximate that by using the linearization. Okay, note that L at x naught, the linearization at x naught, uh, if you take the formula for the linearization and you put in x equals x naught, then uh, the term with the derivative cancels out to zero and you're left with f of x naught. So L of x naught equals f of x naught. Now let's take a look at its derivative. Um, if you take the derivative of the terms in L, you get uh, the derivative of L is equal to zero plus the derivative of f at x naught. So the derivative of L at x naught is equal to the derivative of f at x naught. So in this linearization that we've defined is the best linear approximation at x naught in the sense that f and its linearization L have the same value and the same derivative at x naught. Okay, so let's try a simple linearization of a function. So if I have, let's say the original function is x squared over six. Uh, f of three is easy to calculate, f of 4.5 is not so easy. So f of three is equal to three squared over six is equal to three halves is 1.5. I can do that in my head. I don't need a calculator. Okay. And now if I define this closest linear approximation at x naught equals three, and then uh, the function value at x naught equals three is 1.5. The derivative at x is two x over six equals x over three. Then the derivative at x naught equals three is three over three, which is one. And then if I take the formula for the closest linear approximation, f of x naught plus the derivative of x naught times x minus x naught, then that gives me 1.5 plus one times x minus three, and that simplifies to x minus 1.5. Okay. Now, if we uh, graph these two functions. We have the original function, which that's the red graph, y equals x squared over six. And then linearization is the blue graph, y equals x minus 1.5. And you can see that uh, both the approximation and the original function uh, agree, and the derivatives agree at x is equal to three. And then uh, if we use the uh, linearization as the approximation to the actual function at 4.5, then we would get y equals 4.5 minus 1.5 is three. Okay. Now the actual value is 3.375. Um, there's a relative error of about 10%, which isn't bad given how far 4.5 is three. And geometrically, uh, what you're doing is, or graphically, what you're doing is that you're moving from the point x naught, f of x naught, which lies on both the tangent line and on the curve of the actual function. And then instead of moving along the curve of the actual function, you move along the tangent line. Okay, so this is why this is also called tangent line approximation. Okay, a few more examples. Linear approximation of a constant function. L of x equals f of x naught plus the derivative of x naught times x minus x naught. Uh, the constant function took the value c, let's say, plus the derivative of c is zero. And so you're left with c. So the linearization of a constant function is just a 
constant function itself. Okay, the linearization of a monomial is f of x naught plus f prime at x naught times x minus x naught. That's equal to mx naught plus b equals m times x minus x naught equals mx plus b equals f of x. So the linearization of a monomial is just the monomial. Okay, what about the linear approximation of a polynomial? Well, I leave the details for you, but if you were to apply this formula, L of x equals f of x naught plus f prime at x naught times x minus x naught, this polynomial in x minus x naught would it, uh, all that's left, when, when you do the linearization, you pick up the first part, the monomial part, and then you don't pick up anything from the higher order terms. Okay, uh, linear approximation of sine near x naught equals zero. So the sine function f of x is equal to sine of x. f of zero is sine of zero is zero. The derivative of f is the derivative of the sine, which is the cosine. And the derivative at x naught equals zero means you get cos of zero, which is equal to one. And then the linearization x at x naught equals zero is f of x naught plus derivative at x naught times x minus x naught. That's it. then we found was zero plus one is the derivative times x minus x naught, and that simplifies to x. So the sign of something very small is approximately equal to that something. Okay. All right. Sign of 2x for x very small x very close to zero. Well, hopefully if x is very small, then 2x is also very small. So sine of 2x should be approximately equal to 2x. Okay. Now, I, I'm relying on a previous result, but you don't have to do that. You could just say, you could just apply the formula that for L of x, and you would get exactly the same thing. Okay. 1 over 1 minus x. So the function is 1 over 1 minus x. The function at 0 is equal to 1. The derivative is 1 over 1 minus x. 1 over squared. And the derivative at 0 is equal to 1. Now if we do the linearization, f of x naught plus the derivative of x naught times x minus x naught. Uh, f, of, f of 0 was 1. The derivative at 0 was 1. And then and x minus x naught, x naught is zero, and then this simplifies to one plus x. Okay, what if you want to approximate one over two x minus one? Well, you can go through the same steps calculating the derivative using the formula for L of x. But you can say, well, one over two x minus one with x very small, I can use this previous result, one over one minus x is approximately one plus x, for x small. So let's rewrite this in, in a form that I already know, that I already have a result for. So one over two x minus one, I can uh, change the order of the subtraction if I also pick up a minus one. So that's negative one over one minus two x. And one over one minus two x, for two x very small, is approximately equal to one plus two x. So this will be approximately equal to, I keep the minus one, and I replace one over one minus two x by its approximation, one plus two x. And so that, so we would get uh, minus two x minus one. Okay. Hmm. Let's look at three over two x minus one for x very small. Okay, do the same thing. Uh, I can interchange the order of the subtract of the subtraction and then denominator. So if I also add a minus sign, so that doesn't change anything. So that's equal to minus three over one minus two x. I keep the minus three as it is. One over one minus two x for 2x very small is approximately 1 plus 2x. 
So 3 over 2x minus 1 is approximately equal to minus 3 times 1 plus 2x. And then that simplifies to minus 6x minus 3. Okay, how about we try 3 over 2x plus 5 for x small? Um, well, pull out 3. Right? Now, I've got 1 over 2x plus 5 on the bottom. I would like to have 1 plus or minus something very small. So pull out the 5. So that's 3 fifths of 1 over 2x divided by 5 plus 1. Now, I would like to have 1 over 1 minus something small, not plus something small. So that's 3 fifths, 1 over 1 minus, minus 2x over 5, right? And then that simplifies, that approximates to 3 fifths, and 1 over 1 minus, minus 2x over 5, should be 1 plus, is approximated by 1 plus, minus 2x over 5. And then uh, multiply out by the 3 fifths, I will get 3 fifths minus 6 over 25x. And once again, you could have just started with f of x equals 3 over 2x plus 5. And you could use the uh, formula for the linearization, calculating the derivatives, and you should end up with exactly the same thing. Okay. Now we are going to do uh, different, and we are going to do linear approximation again, except we're just going to, uh, we're going to use a slightly different notation for it, but we're doing exactly the same.